I just want to give a huge shout out to all the homies over there in Ireland. I see the comments. I love it. I appreciate you guys. You're teaching me things that I don't even know. So if you are from Ireland, make sure you drop a comment and say what's up. Dude, these things are beefy. These are PD-150 head bolts. And supposedly these are good for like 350 horsepower. Correct me if I'm wrong. These were sent over to me by the boys over at Performance CDI. They're the same ones that sent me that 1756 in the last video. If you missed the last video, make sure after this video, you check it out. I'm stoked on that turbo. It's going to make like 35 PSI, boys. It's going to it's gonna rip. Also, we got all this camber. We don't need it to be terribly fast. We just need it to make those spooly boy noises, which it has provided. Something scary about what I'm going to be doing today is I'm dropping these head bolts in one at a time. Yes, I know that's malpractice. What you should do is get a new head gasket, take the head off, change the head gasket, and then throw these bolts all in at a sequence, drop them in at a sequence. Well, that's not what I'm going to be doing. My head gasket is hopefully fine. If it's not, I don't know. But I'm going to be dropping these head studs in one at a time. And of course, as always, we do not use hand tools when we don't need to. So we got our impact. We don't fake it here on the Alex Wittick YouTube channel. Ugh, that was too tight for the impact. Oh wait, no, that's tight. Somebody commented on the last video that they want more of, like just hands-on, seeing me, seeing what I'm doing. Yep, I forgot one of the bolts. Doing this stuff instead of like cutting the clip up. But with these, as long as you get that tiny belt cover off, it, everything just comes right off. One of the downsides to my valve cover is right there. It's cracked, so I have a slight leak sometimes. But I'm gonna fill that in with some silicone when we put it back together. And there are the head bolts. One, two, three, four, five. And you're like, oh, where are the other ones? They're in these holes right here. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. I've actually never even looked at the head bolts. Maybe I've like subconsciously known where they are, but I never really looked at their placement. It's kind of crazy how they're on the injector lobe, rocker, body, whatever you want to call it. In here. I do have a brand new Felpro gasket, but what are the chances that I actually use this and I don't reuse this bad boy? Comment your guesses below and we shall see when this thing goes back together. The first head bolt that I'm gonna be removing is this center one right here. And then I'm gonna move on to whichever way it tells me to go on my little piece of paper. But I'm gonna suck up the oil from there before even loosen it. And then before we send the new bolt in, we're gonna hit it with some air to make sure that there's no oil in those threads. Cause if I tighten it down with oil in there, I could actually crack the block. Right, let's get that removed. Going in for round two. Nice. Much better. And just for good measure, we got... I'm not nervous. You're nervous. <sighs> yeah, this is great. I'm loving this. And here goes that moment of truth, baby. All right, so visually, there's not much of a difference between, I believe the BRM is a PD-100 engine head bolt and the PD-150 head bolts, but obviously these are much stronger. That's what everyone's going with. The markings on the top are different though. These say 17 UF2 Italy. Can't really distinguish anything besides the marking on the top says 10, where this one says 17. So the PD-150s are obviously bigger and better than the PD-100 head stud, but um, yeah, the markings are different as well. So we know someone didn't upgrade this at some point now i'm going to put some compressed air into the hole because like i said before there's oil in those threads like you can see it seeping down there's not much if i didn't take it out with the paper towel we would be in trouble so i'm not messing around with this oil so what i've been doing is i'm taking this air hose sticking it all the way down to the bottom of the threads taking the air hose the nozzle tip up to there and blowing all that air down to the bottom of the threads I pull this up and it's been getting covered in oil because it's shooting the oil back up i wipe it i repeat the process and it gets literally all the oil out of the thread. At first, it seemed like a hassle, but once I got it all done, the threads are completely clear all the way down to the bottom. Oh, there you can see it. Now comes the daunting part that I've never done before. I'm gonna drop this head bolt down in the hole, run it in by hand. I would do it with an impact, but I don't want to upset myself in the future or any of you watching. And I'm told that I gotta put this to 30 Newton meters first. All right, I got my torque wrench set to 60 Newton meters, and I'm gonna do two 90 degree pulls. This has to go here, this is 90 degrees, and then the final pull will be to here, or I'll reset, we'll do two of them. Now I'm gonna do the two 90 degree pulls. I got a phone call, but I'm halfway through the 90 degree pull. So I'm gonna go to right here for my first 90 degree pull, and then reset. I'm gonna go right here and that's gonna be my second 90 degree pull.
This is the bolt we just tightened up. I'm going to go to number two right here. It goes one, two, three, and then it follows this whole thing. So I'm going to take this one out. Nice. I'm not as afraid to take them out anymore. Another one. Another one. If you're going to do these studs, you need to do this air hose technique. Like these threads are completely clear. You can see that. This is the method. Another stud in. Tighten down to 30 newton meters. Tighten down to 60 newton meters. One 90 degree pull. And the second 90 degree pull. Oh, that is scary. <laughs> cool i got eight of the head studs replaced i'm about to go on to number nine it's the last bolt before i go to 10 and there's only 10 of them so this is the most visible bolt i'll take it out with you guys i was afraid before but now i just i do that double crack and then i run it until it's loose honestly this isn't so bad if you're thinking about doing it definitely do it and if you want a set of these studs hit up performance tdi they're the homies so i get that out pretty quick there's not gonna be much oil in here some of them have been completely covered and when i stick the air hose in there i know if there's oil in there right away because it makes a gargling noise or it doesn't and i've run it through a few times just for safety but i got a little bit of a, of a taper here so it's not gonna sit flush on the bottom and throw more air up on the end wow there really isn't much oil in here at all i'll probably only have to do it two or three times check it out with my light Oh, that is clear. Perfect. Drop this guy down. Clean the end of this so it doesn't have any oil on it every time, just in case. Hand tight. Make sure all my threads are engaged. Absolute must. This isn't a how-to, but I just feel confident on doing this, so I'm happy I get to show it and share it with you guys. I'm going to send this up. 30 newton meters. Between 30 and 40 newton meters to snug it up just to get the initial stretch. I'm going to snug this up. I'm going to run it up to 60 newton meters. Awesome. I'm gonna let it sit for a minute, rest. Rock my baby on the treetop. And there's like a weird, like, slip feel that you get, like that right there. It's scary. It's really scary when it does that slip feel, but it's done on all of them, so we're good. This is number nine. I've done eight so far. And also, someone asked for the time lapse. Let me know if you guys like the time lapse. I enjoy filming it. Degrees, and just like that, I take the tension off, and then I'm gonna go on to the 10th one. I just finished up head bolt number 10. It's all tightened down, it's got both its 90 turns, and we're finished with the head bolt tightening, which is awesome. It was a little bit daunting, but we got through it, and I hope that helps you guys, you ever try it. But I got the valve cover gasket sealing area all cleaned up. I'm gonna take some of this mass airflow cleaner, and I'm gonna spray these edges on the half moons, because these tend to leak right at the two mating surfaces, so we're gonna clean that up, wipe it down, and then we're gonna add a little bit of sealant. So I'm gonna be using some Permatex Ultra Black to dab it with my finger in the half moons. Just like that, I'm a pro, I'm a pro. Got it applied to all the half moons. And while it sets up, I'm gonna go prep the valve cover and I'm gonna use the old gasket. So whoever guessed the old gasket, you were correct. And we're gonna send it back on. I'm honestly only reusing this because there's already a little bit of Permatex for this new Permatex to grab onto because I do have that chunk missing from the side of my valve cover. Car's never seen a heat cycle before, so this is practically a brand new valve cover gasket. Nice. Feel free to tell your friends, your family, your grandmother, your grandfather. That's how Alex Whittick puts his valve cover in. I just like to go side to side. The thread will find itself. It's just a guarantee. Everything hooked back up. I'm actually gonna take the injector wire loom off. I realize it's not the, I learned from the last video that it's not the cam sensor. It's actually the injector harness. So I'm gonna do that, cycle it a few times just so that there's oil on the cam. So when it starts, you know, it's not dry. Everything's all checked off. I got everything hooked up. Turn the battery on. We're just gonna do a dry fire here. We're not gonna actually turn the car on yet. I'm just gonna cycle the key a few times. Good enough. Hook this back up and we're gonna hear that click. 
right, silent click, but it clicked. Back over here. We're gonna start this thing right now. Just so we can prove that everything's good. What you know about it, baby? What you know? I'm gonna let it run for like a minute with the garage door open, and then we're gonna rev it. It's been idling for the past five minutes, no leak. That's good. That's good. So, uh, as a celebratory. Well guys, I did it. I replaced my PD100 head bolts with PD150 head bolts. It was a little bit scary, but I got it done and it was pretty easy. Of course, this video and the previous video would not have been possible without these guys right here. Huge shout out to Performance CDI for supplying the head bolts and the turbo in the previous video. But even crazier than that, they sent me more parts. There's more parts to install, not only on the Mark V, but on the Mark VI. And I'm just gonna keep y'all waiting for that stuff. The installs are coming. I appreciate you guys watching. If there's anything you would have changed about the video, please let me know. If there's anything you guys want to see more in depth, just let me know. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I'm sorry you even have to do this, but I'm a smaller automotive YouTuber and I'm trying to buy a shop i'm trying to i'm trying to do it big you know what i'm saying so if you guys want to see me do it big please like the video maybe throw me a subscription and uh i'm <laughs> this is so cool like i'm filming myself work on cars and you guys are just eating it up and it's incredible i really do appreciate you guys watching commenting sharing information letting me know what i've done wrong and what i could do better so just like that i'm gonna say peace and i can't wait to see you guys in the next one adios